Welcome everyone, this is Georgia Gal, and today's video will be different from what you're used to. If you aren't aware, my channel right now does mostly servant analysis, as well as opinion videos on Fate Grand Order. But I'm always looking for new video ideas. One of the things I've always enjoyed doing with Fate was brainstorming and theorizing what the identities as well as plot points of whatever spoilers and leaks we get. And recently, there was a particular reveal of a new servant. Now, if you are only interested in the NA version and don't want to be spoiled of possible future content, then please stop watching this video, as this video will be heavy on spoilers. However, if you're fine with that, just sit back and enjoy. So, currently, the Six Singularity has been released in the arcade version of FGO and the Singularity is different from the one that was originally released in FGO. While the sixth Singularity we got was named Camelot, for Arcade it's called Jerusalem. Not only that, it seems that the Round Table Knights are completely absent from the Singularity. However, that's not even the most interesting part, because an exclusive servant was revealed. <laughs> The servant you just watched was Jack the Molay, and you might be wondering, who is Molay and why is he relevant? And that's what I want to talk about. Please keep in mind that I'm talking completely blind here. I do not know what the actual story of Jerusalem Singularity is, nor do I know what abilities and noble phantom Jax the Molay has. Instead, what I'll be talking about is what makes Molay unique and what he could possibly have. So, to begin with, who is Molay? Jack the Molay was the last Grandmaster of the Templars. Who are the Templars and what is a Grandmaster, you ask? Well, you can think of the Templars as kind of like the Assans, but for the Crusader side, and with a lot more Inquisition and burning of heretics. There's actually a lot more than just that, but I want to keep this simple, so we'll go with that for now. As for what is a Grandmaster, it's basically the leader of the Templars. So we already have a uniqueness to Malay. In history, there's two type of people that are always remembered the first of its kind, and the last of its kind, and Molay was the last of the Grand Masters. With his death, the Templars were no more. But what else did Molay do? Molay did do some skirmishes here and there, lost a few important fights, and tried to raise a new crusade. However, I don't believe that that will actually be relevant for the Molay that was revealed. Instead, there's two legends about Molay that seem to be much more important. First, it's the legend that Molay conquered Jerusalem. This legend started circulating around Europe several centuries after the fact, but it was mostly a misunderstanding. Basically put, there was a Mongol general with a similar name that took over some lands near Jerusalem, and they just confused it both as being the same person. This legend is relevant because in the singularity Molay is present, so either we're seeing a situation where the legend is becoming a reality, thus resulting in a singularity, or they decided that Molay actually did take over Jerusalem. But considering what was said in Camelot, it's more likely that Molay is the main cause of the singularity in an attempt to take the Holy Land as he always wanted. And finally, the other legend has to do with Molay's death. So, how did Molay die? Turns out Malay died in a rather pitiful way. Basically put, the King of France was in debt to the Templars. So in good French fashion, instead of paying what they owed, the King had instead disbanded the Templars by essentially throwing an Inquisition on them. As you can expect of the Inquisition, the Templars were tortured until they admitted to crimes they never committed. Ah, good old fashioned Inquisition, no one expects it. Years later, Molay would redact his confession, likely because he was already 70 years old at the time and didn't have that much to lose. Regardless, the French king would then have Molay and his men burned at a stake. 
some records point out that Malay was calm and serene at the time, only proclaiming that God would avenge them. And as it would turn out, both the king and the queen of France died one year after the execution. This resulted in a rapid succession of three sons and a grandson, which if you don't know what that means in European terms, it means a lot of backstabs and kingslayers to get the throne. In just 14 years of Molay's death, the same royal family that had sentenced him to death for owing too much to him and his order had completely collapsed. This resulted in the legend of the curse to spread among Europeans. The Malay had cursed the royal family while he was being burnt at the stake. And you can kind of see this in his noble phantom. Malay is in the middle of a graveyard, tombstones bursting into flames, much like he and his men were burned at a stake. Then he strikes his opponent with a fiery strike. I wouldn't be surprised if the legend of the curse was turned into his noble phantom where Molay uses his anger to fuel a fiery curse onto the enemies. And finally, the last thing I want to talk about, the one detail that I noticed immediately on Molay, his glasses. There's a few servants to wear glasses as part of their design, most notably Da Vinci, Moriarty, Sigurd, Hans and Shikibu. All of them have glasses. And while for some we can chuck it to them being more interested in modern technology, in Sigurd's case it was explained that the glasses are a crystallization of wisdom. And when we look carefully at the servants in question, the wisdom part makes sense. Both Sigurd and Moriarty have a skill with wisdom in its name. Da Vinci is a natural genius, Hans is one of the best at understanding humans, and Shikibu has her encyclopedia knowledge of books. So glasses in the universe, at least when it comes to serpent's design, seem to signify at least some form of unique intelligence or wisdom. Given how Molay has glasses and he's not known for being an intellectual, it's very likely that he possesses some unique skill regarding wisdom, likely related to all the myths behind the Templars. And that's it. As of the recording of this video, Molai isn't out yet, so I don't know all of his skills or noble phantoms, so I'm just speculating on what he might actually have. Unfortunately, since he is arcade exclusive, we'll likely only see him in FGO after some years have passed. But anyway, what is your opinion of Jack the Molay? As always, if you enjoy my content, leave a like and subscribe. Also, comment down below on what you think of Jack the Molay. Until next time, bye.